Hello everyone, welcome to Bowser Training Lead Code Solution. Uh, if you want the best mock interview experience uh, in North America, feel free to check us out uh, at the, this WeChat. And also feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, channel. So today we're going to talk about one problem, which is uh, this one. So find peak elements. So essentially, what they define a peak element is an element that is greater than its neighbors. So in this case, they are defining as strictly large than its neighbors. And uh, there will be, they give some like special cases that two elements, adjacent elements are not the same. And also you, you would imagine the number minus one, don't get confused about in Python, this is the last element, element but this, this actually mean this is like the, you know, the element before the zero. And then the last, uh, the last element, the element after the last element, they both will be um, negative in um, infin uh, infin infinity. And then uh, what they will let you to find is a peak element among all those elements. Uh, there could be multiple picks, but all you need to do is uh, apply, uh, just re return one of those. So by simply look at this, right? So this is a, if you do it in linear, it will be su a super trivial problem. So essentially you, you go through the list and then you just compare the, the previous one and then the next one, right? So that would be Owen solution. And then uh, now the interesting part is you're trying to optimize that and then you know better than, uh, what is better than n has to be log n. How do we do it in log order? Normally when you present a problem, the array has to be sorted for you to do log order. But this one, because of this special uh, requirement that the previous element and the last element are in, uh, negative infinite. So we'll see basically, is there any, any way that we can discard, discard, discard half, half of the array while we're doing search? So if you look at this, we can roughly think about like this, right? So the la the um, the first part is ne negative infinity, and then this is negative infinity. So when we do binary search, let's say we cut it in here, how can we make sure we know we have to go left or we have to go right? So, because there's not a definite answer, we need to find a definite answer, which is, let's say if we cut in half, these are our main elements. If you compare with, with this left element, what can it, can it tell you? So because there, there can be only two cases, right? So this element is less, the main element is less than the previous element. And if it's like this case, you know there has to be a peak somewhere between. Why? Because this one is negative infinity. As long as this is a, um, less than the previous one, there has to be a peak somewhere. So uh, on the other hand, if this element, let's say, let, let's say if we cut it here, the previous element is um, the previous element is less than this element. Oh, sorry. What I meant here is the previous element is larger than the previous uh, than the main element. There has to be a peak. But if you let's say if you cut it here, right, and then this element is less than that, you cannot guarantee there will be a peak because you just simply cannot guarantee that. Similar thing here. If you cut a point here, and then you compare the values, because this is an negative infin in, uh, infinity. So if there's an element uh, here, is actually the element after mid is larger than this, you can guarantee there has to be a peak because, because this is a negative, right? So you, you increase and then you have to drop somewhere, you have to drop so there will be a peak. But if you cut it here and then uh, the element, the next element is less than that, you cannot guarantee that. So basically this is how we determine in binary search whether we go left or we go right. Um, so before we think about, before we come up with a solution, right, so we will think about a few edge cases to help us think through. So first of all, what happens if a null array or one element array, you can handle it in separate or you can, um, for the one element array, you can, your algorithm can also take care of that. Um, what happens for strictly increasing array, if your array is stri strictly increasing, that means the last element has to be the peak because because the last um, the one after the last element is uh, negative indefinite for a strictly decreasing array so the first element would be the peak array with all the elements here it will, it will not happen but as a good follow-up if you think about it uh, how would you solve this case right okay so with that said uh, when we do binary search we know there are two templates we can do it a uh, um, 
recursively or we can do it iteratively. So when we do it recursively, it will be like this. So you plus, uh, you find the mate element and uh, what you need to do is for, for this one is simply the mate equals to zero is just a boundary check because you don't want to go out of boundary. So if the mate is, is equal to zero or um, you compare with the previous element so that you will never go array index out of bound, right? So if this one is larger than that and also this is a similar check, you don't want to go out of bound. Uh, or this element, basically this is saying this element, the middle item element is larger than the previous and the middle element is uh, um, larger than the, the next element. So you will return the index. Or else, so this is the interesting part. So if the middle element is larger than zero, uh, so basically this, again, this is a boundary check. If your middle element is less than your previous element, so this is essentially saying this, your middle element is less than your previous element. So there has to be a peak here. So you have to move left. So when you move left, you basically pick the right boundary to be middle minus one. This is how you move right, uh, move left. And then else you just move right. Uh, this can guarantee you definitely will find a, find a peak in this, in this problem. So the co time complexity is log n because we always discuss one half, discard one half. And then space complexity is log O n because we, as long as we use recursion, there will be a recursion depth in there, basically the function stack. Um, the other solution uh, is to do it iteratively, right? So you, as long as left and then right, you find the mid element. So here we compare, okay, so if the mid element is larger than, um, is larger than the mid plus one element. So this is saying the mid element, the mid element is larger than the other element. Uh, this is not the case here, but so this means the, the last one is less than that. The last element, element is less than that. So that basically means we have to, there has to be a, uh, there has to be a peak on the right part, right? Wait a sec. So if we draw something, the middle element is less. So the here. So we want to in this case we want we actually want to go to left. My bad. So we want to go to left. That's why we assign the right to be the mid element here. Uh, why is that? So basically, so think about this because we have this left and the right to guard our our range, right? So when you do left plus right divided by two, so your left could be the left, uh, the your mid could be the left part. That's why we use mid plus one. We don't want to use mid minus one because then it will be array out of index. So you always compare, comply, compare like this. And then this basically means we'll go left because, uh, because the mid part is larger than the next uh, element. Um, so vice versa, all else we go to left. So here we don't do my, uh, mid minus one because this mid element could also be itself, could also be the peak. So that's why you want, only want to shift it by one. Else you shift by, you assign the left part plus one, then you go left, uh, you go right. And then at the end, we return the left element. So this is uh, uh, the iterative solution. I, personally, I prefer the, um, the recursion solution because it's just simpler, simple to understand. Um, at the end, a few follow-ups, right? So some of the problem, they will say, okay, the first and the last element, uh, no matter what they are, they will just be marked as negative infinite. Uh, so in this case, we can uh, just uh, skip the first and last one, and then we just start from uh, array uh, one to uh, index n minus one, n minus two, actually. And then uh, what happens if the elements are equal? So in this case, we just need to change the comparison logic here so that it's larger or equal then. So then that should solve it. Um, okay, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching.